What's up filmers? Welcome to my very empty apartment. So in today's video, I kind of wanted to do another lighting exercise and kind of talk to you about how I use larger light sources in order to enhance my videos. Now, this has been something that I've been a little bit more hyper aware of as I've been looking back at some of my old YouTube videos and realized that I could have done a lot more to just add that little extra something to make them look a lot better. So the light that I'm gonna be using for this exercise is actually a new light by Godox and they were nice enough to send it to me. This is the SL60W Mark II and this is the bicolor version. Now the original SL60W was a pretty popular light back in the day because the really only other option was the 120D from aperture and if you couldn't afford that then the SL60W was a great alternative but now that the Mark II version is out I'm really eager to see what this light has to offer. One thing I should say is that Godox was nice enough to send this light out to me for this video but I'm not being paid they're not seeing this video before I release it and this is going to be an unbiased review. So another way that I wanted to use this light was try to use it in some situations that I don't normally find myself in. So first off I wanted to try to use this light to light from the outside so I wanted to actually put it outside of my scene and see if I could recreate some ambient sunlight coming through a window. So I went over to my buddy Jeremy's house and we set it up right outside of his kitchen window. And one of the nice things about this SL60 Mark II is that you can control it via Bluetooth on your phone. So once we got everything set up, we didn't have to have someone outside of the house controlling the light for us because I can just connect it through Bluetooth and I can control the intensity and the color temperature, which is really nice. And we just shot it right through his window and it just kind of helped bring up the overall level of the scene and we were able to get some pretty nice shots out of it. Another situation that I don't typically find myself in is shooting narrative projects. Now I was very privileged to be asked to help shoot a short film by my buddy Sean Stone and I was actually acting as gaffer on that film when my buddy Jeremy was the DP but one of the ways that we used this SL60 Mark II was we got some unbleached muslin and just kind of t-boned it across a c-stand and I just shot the SL60 Mark II right into the unbleached muslin because there wasn't really a lot of space to light in that location so we kind of had to do a lot of bouncing and this SL60 Mark II is definitely bright enough to bounce off of reflected surfaces and just bring up the overall ambience in the scene. We did that a lot with the ceilings. The ceilings were white thankfully so we were able to just shoot straight up into the ceiling and bring up the overall ambience of the shot. We used this SL60 Mark II and then a Godox VL150 and those were essentially the only two lights that we used on this short film and I think that it actually works really well. So yeah, for my first time gaffing on a narrative project, I think that this SL60 Mark II was a great addition to have in my lighting kit. So let's just touch on this SL60 Mark II bicolor. Now, again, this is a bicolor light, so you can go all the way from, I think, 2800 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. This light is very simple to use with just a few buttons and knobs on the back, which control the color temperature and the light intensity. There's also some buttons for like the Bluetooth and setting the different effects that you can use with this light. Now, I'll be honest, I have a lot of Godox lights and they all have these different effects on them. I don't really use them that much. I could maybe see myself using the flickering fire effect at some point for a video, but yeah, it's cool that they're there. I just don't use them that often. Something else you should know about this light is that it cannot be powered off of a V-mount battery like a lot of the other lights that you'll see. This light will strictly be run off of wall power. So this is great if you have a studio with places to plug in or if you're going on a shoot and there's plenty of outlets but if you're gonna be on location somewhere and there isn't a lot of outlets, this could be a drawback for this light. This light also comes with a standard Bones mount, so you can mount basically any Bones mount softbox or light modifier on to this SL60 Mark II. One thing I will know about this light is that it doesn't have a umbrella mount to it, but if you typically just use a Bones mount softbox, then this shouldn't really be an issue for you. So another way that you can use brighter lights like this is to bring up the overall ambience of your shot. Now I'm actually doing that right now in this scene. As you can see, there's a window right here and you would assume that that's where the light is coming from, but I'm actually using the SL60 Mark II and it's actually blasting on the window and creating a little bit more ambience in the room as well. So it's providing a little bit more of a key, but also bringing up the overall ambience. And since this light can be controlled on a phone, I can turn it off to show you what it's gonna look like if I didn't have the SL60 Mark II on. So a lot darker of a shot can't really expose for my face, but with the light on, it still looks natural. It doesn't look saucy or lit, 
but it's bringing up the overall ambience, bringing up the level. And this was done super easily, right? I'm just basically shooting it right towards the shears of this window and it's bouncing back and giving me a really nice soft light. And in this example, you can see that I have my key light right now, which is lighting me. And I have a little hair light that's providing a little bit of splash on my shoulder. But if I turn on my SL60, which I have pointed up into the ceiling just behind my key light, it'll actually provide some more ambient light in this shot. So as you can see, this shot I think looks a lot more natural. It doesn't look as sourcey or lit. One of the things that I've always hated when I look back at my old YouTube videos is a lot of them just look like they're shot in like this dark cave, which I really, really don't like. So if I just had another light and I just blasted it up into my ceiling, it would have brought up the overall ambience and it would look a lot less amateurish. So that's one thing that I wish looking back that I knew that like, oh, it'd be so much better if I just brought up the ambience of the shot instead of just using one key light softbox and a hair light and everything else in the background kind of just falls into darkness. So that's another way that I use lights like this SL60W is just blast it at something white and it'll bring up the overall ambience in your shot. All right, so I'm here helping my buddy Jeremy shoot a little brand video for a church. And I got all of the, well, most of the Godox lights that I own I plugged in and I have them controlled on the app. So I can actually turn on my key, the SL60 Mark II, my hair light, which is gonna be that little TL60. And then we have a little TL120 right back there as just like a little accent light. So. Another nice thing about this SL60 Mark II is that it's kind of a more modern light, so you can connect it via Bluetooth and you can have all your Godox products in one app and then just kind of turn them on and off. So turn the 120 off, turn the 60 off, and then turn my key light off. The fans on this light are a little bit audible if you listen but most microphones probably won't even pick it up. So when you're first starting out in filmmaking, lights are definitely not the most exciting thing to talk about. If you're anything like me, your eyes just kind of glassed over whenever a filmmaker would start talking to you about the importance of lighting. But to put it in a little bit of a different perspective, in 10 years, when I'm like, what, 43? I'm probably gonna have different cameras and different lenses, but I'll still have the same lighting gear that I'm using right now because this is gear that can actually stick with you as you grow. Is this Godox SL60 Mark II perfect? No, but I do think that it is the perfect first light for any aspiring filmmaker. And the fact that this is a bright bicolor light makes it a light that I can definitely recommend to anyone who's looking for their first professional video light. I'm trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to tell you. Oh yeah, actually, let's...